is like exploding in the stream chat. People who, oh, they pretend like they support me. They pretend like they're positive and they're not, they're shitheads. They sit here and they sneak this and they say underhanded things. They try to literally bring up uh, either detractor memes or, or literal drama shit every day. They do it on purpose so that they can try to derail the shit that I'm doing on my streams, you know? And it just gets to the point where it's so frustrating. I just want to have fun, man. I really just want to fucking have fun. That's it. That's all I want to have to do is have fun with you guys. Fun, 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 fun. Way more fun. Fun, 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 fun. I just want to have fun, 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 fun. Way more fun. Fun, 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 fun. I just want to have no taxes, bills to pay, nice and chill stream today. You're having a fun and interactive time with me and you're finding entertainment, positivity, and value in it then the support should just come naturally, okay? I just wanna have fun, 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 fun. Way more fun, 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 fun. I just wanna have fun, 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 fun. Way more fun, 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 fun. Here's the bottom line, and I'm tired of it now. No more excuses, all right? Because the bottom line is people are like, Phil's not engaged in his commentary. And Phil's commentary is boring, and that's why people don't want to watch the playthroughs of the streams. Bullshit. I'm loving this game. I'm voice acting. I'm engaged. I'm commentating on everything that's going on actively. Bullshit. I call massive bullshit on any idiot who says that about either the Watch Dogs 2, which I've been playing recently and really liking, or Pokemon. It's bullshit. I call complete and utter bullshit on anyone who's saying that I'm not engaged and I sound like I'm bored. I'm not. So, I've had enough excuses. It just seems to me like people are fucking lazy and don't want to come out to the streams. I don't even know what else to say, you know? That being said... 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 Hello, hello. This is Phil. Phil Burnett. All right? And um, just wanted to tell you that I love the podcast. That being said, big ups. That being said, which vest is podcast vest? That being said, relaxing, chill, interactive, fun. That being said, which vest is podcast vest? That being said, relaxing, chill, interactive, fun. A-L. Team Insight, the legend. Fantastic Mr. Sam. The dentist. Sneak to the dead. Psychological style host. Me or cat. Artistic style host. Tap being set. Which vest is podcast best? Tap being set. Which vest is podcast best? Oh, hello, everyone. We are here Sunday show time, ready to get your weekend ended in the best way possible. And of course, I'm joined by multiple, multiple style legends, starting with our normal musical style, creative style, Meerkat style host. How you feeling, my friend? Hey, what's up, maniacs? We are here today on a Sunday, and we're about to chill, interact, and talk about some nonsense, I guess. Absolutely, that's what we're here for. Also, we have a first visit style guest, style guest, goes by the name of Atlas the Bookkeeper. How you feeling, my friend? Feeling good, feeling good. Glad to be here. Nice to get you on the show. And uh, yeah, obviously, this is definitely one of the most uh, requested guests ever. So there you go. That's why we got it. We listen to the fans. We listen to the fans of your feedback. But we need more of it. We need more of it. <laughs> Engage with us. Anyways, business style announcement style stuff. Meerkat. As you can see, by the way, Sam and Steve are still not here. We hold out for when those they both return and we can return to full power. But we continue on. Meerkat, business style announcements. Go ahead. Um... Yeah, nothing really new. You know, the fanfic isn't happening until we, we got more people on board. Mm -hmm. And that's that's basically kind of it. But I would like to exploit this segment and milk this segment Please for do. what it's worth and insert some interesting stuff that I've noticed during the week that have happened. If you guys have any comments about them, you can you can just say something. Please do. Uh, first of all, we got an update on champions. 
from uh, of course TJ Gamebox. Okay. We have a uh, a charitable contribution of over twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred. Yes, this is one point two thousand dollars. It's on the screen now. Wow. <laughs> yep. He is seven. I heard it was eight hundred. <laughs> oh no, twelve hundred, brother. We're hanging a banging, brother. Come on. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Dude, and yeah it's uh it, it's for somebody who's called the the head shrinker yeah, or something yeah, that's the which, best. <laughs> yeah, which is a service that DSP needs but I'm not sure if Champions is going to give it to him. Um and he is 7th in the current leaderboard so hoping for at least a top 4 mm -hmm. hopefully. My favorite part of this wow. is that it's the head shrinkers is the superstar competition going on yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> the head shrinkers i remember that gimmick that's like way old like you know like i remember like when i like young this is like i don't know how, it's just the old gimmick where like they're like these like tribe people that you know head shrinkers like the whole like trope of like people from those kind of countries can shrink heads and stuff and like yeah it was two dudes like samoa style dudes you know it, it was very funny but i love that that's what causing phil to get this fire under his ass for spending is the head shrinkers Atlas you... is a total mark for that nostalgia, though. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He loves that 80s, 80s style things, like late 80s. That's his wheelhouse, and he will spend his ass off for that. Atlas, are you a wrestling's enjoyer? Uh, no. I, I think it's cool that people enjoy it, but I've never been one to watch it. Okay. Makes sense to me. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I... fair enough. <laughs> um, I, I think it's, it's more like external factors that made him wail, such as, you know, stress or being disappointed after a slow day, something like that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to do with somebody in the game, in my opinion, but maybe he is just a big fan of big Samoan sweaty dudes. I don't know. <laughs> they, hype, dude. they are hype. <laughs> they are. So $1,200. So, and the question is real quick is where is this coming from? Right? Because this is, more, he's not like getting wailed out that hard these days. So are we now entering a world where he doesn't wait for big tip days to do it? He does get into that YouTube check to get his uh, champions fix. I mean, that's a question. Right? I don't know. That's a question. I've never been sure where, where he gets his money to wail out like that from, because I don't ever think he's really doing that well. No, no, well, he is. I mean, that, that one, uh, I forget, uh, TJ Gamebox, I'm sure, was the person that did it. He had a real, it was like, you can match it up, right? So he'll have a big day of this week, and like that's how much he spends. So like, the theory is that's very believable to me is the tips are just that's that is definitely that's the champion's money and the YouTube check pays for everything else because he does get enough from YouTube to, you know, pay for his normal bills. You know what I mean? Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. I just man, it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go want to have a fun time, guys, go to the Reddit of WB champions and you'll see people saying, how do I quit this game? I can't stop oh, buying stuff on this game. It's a sad <laughs> place, dude. Sad place. People get divorced yeah. over it and stuff. It's crazy. But anyways, okay. Enough of... And uh, they, yeah. they have an explicit rule, uh, no DSP. So uh -huh. you're not allowed to say anything about DSP on that forum. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> people are posting it endlessly, and they said no DSP on this forum. So he got banned from yeah, even dude. that. All right, go ahead, Meerkat. Next uh, business style so next up we have... Um, Secret Limited came out with another very high-quality graphic, such as the one we talked about in the previous stream we did. Of, I think, the slowest day streams of all time. Now we have the slowest marathons of all time. And something we're going to bring up as a topic of today is the Black Friday adpocalypse and what a colossal disaster it was. Um, 165 is what it says here. It's the top five. It's ranked as the fifth lowest uh, ever marathon. And, um, yeah, I sure hope that pattern keeps going. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Well, now we're in like as again these these marathons are from the last two years. You know, this is it's just from 2021, 2023. So I know, but it's not like it used to be, man. These these marathons used to be easy 300, 300 plus, not even a question. And now it gets to what his goal is for a normal stream, right? I mean, it's crazy. Oh yeah. But well, I can't blame him for not supporting. I don't know if any of you actually watched it, but it, it was it was abysmal. It was the worst thing I've seen. I mean that's that's I didn't assuming watch it. I didn't watch it either. I don't there's like no like moments from it. So I think every all the clippers kind of got bored of it too or there was just nothing to share because it was all shit. I don't know what case what's the case here but there was surprise. I was in and out throughout shit. the day yeah. and exactly there's no clips from it. The the biggest part of it to me was when he ate that sandwich and that's saying a lot that him eating a sandwich is the highlight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 
I pretend those segments don't exist still, so I'm not even watching that. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. But anyways, yeah, so he got 165, and I got a few bags from that, if you don't mind, Meerkat. Can we play a few bags? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, it's always time. It's always Begamous here. Uh, so real quick, let me get it up here, and I'll show you. We do have some classic bag-style bags from this event. Uh, let's start with what he expects, okay? So... This is what he expects from the marathon. Let me get it up here, and you should be able to hear it now. Go ahead, please. Uh, Start. Uh, there we go. Here's how it works. All right. Here's how it works. Every hundred dollars raised today in tips, I'll take a shot. Okay. If I get a bunch in a, in a short period of time, I will take a few quickly. But mm -hmm. there's absolutely no way I'm going to be taking twenty shots today. That's insanely unhealthy for anyone. That no <laughs> one should do that in one day. <laughs> So I don't know why he has to say this. Twenty shots would be how much money? <laughs> two grand, just to eat cool. Yep. Two grand. Okay, cool. I'm not going to do that, guys. So don't please don't donate two grand. I won't be doing that. But all right, keep let's keep going. Um, I'm going to pace myself. As I said earlier, the point is to have fun and be a little buzzed and a little you know happy, but also to put on a fun <laughs> marathon. This is not about me raising money. It's about me putting out content for you. And if the whole thing is that the, the, the stream gets ruined because I'm drunk, then uh -huh. there's you know, no point in doing it. You know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, if a bunch of contributions were to mm -hmm. come in fast, right? And people were like, Hey, well you do twenty shots. Well no, I'm not gonna first of all, there's no circumstance I would ever do twenty shots. <laughs> That's it's harmful. I'm not doing that. It's harmful. Right? If I don't know. You have to limit. Like, how many shots should you really have in an hour? Two or three? You probably shouldn't have more than that. Right? So this is all just big cope to say how I'm not an alcoholic. It's kind of boring. Let's get to where he picks up to the membership bag. Okay, I'm going to skip this one. I'm aborting. Uh, uh, hold on. Oh, please, While we're ahead. on the taking shots, yes. he still owes us one shot from last time. I still remember. Ooh. From the last stream he did. Oh, where I'm glad he you remember. <laughs> yeah. He still owes one. And his whole excuse back then was that he had some weird cocktail that he made too strong. So when people gave him money, he doesn't have to drink. Oh yeah, that was the white. The yeah, the, the, the he made that one too strong, so that makes up for it. Yeah, I remember that one. Oh, that is still yeah, that cosmic drink or whatever. Yeah, son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, and but how lame true? is it that he puts these these limits on the drinking anyway? It's supposed to be part of the gimmick, and then you just put these artificial limits on it so you don't get too plastered or whatever. Like, <laughs> hey, it, it doesn't make any sense. Do you operate uh, a household? You have business degree. Stop asking questions. Yeah, <laughs> have you right, have you overcome right. a crippling alcoholism? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, so keep quiet. Quiet, you. Uh, is it is it true? <laughs> since I didn't watch this, is it true that he lowered the goal so he could drink more? Yes. 100%. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. He lowered oh it to 50. God. So he changed it to 50. And he had a, oh, an all-timer. This The most cringiest thing I've ever heard. I'm going to play it here. It's on Poems Futures yeah, Twitter please. feed, of course. Because uh, this one was the cringe eternal happened, broke out here. Let me scroll down to get it, of course. Hang on. If it's oh, what I it think it one? is, it's also very sad. I, I think it's it's that one, too. I think we're all thinking the same thing. Uh -huh. Let me get it. The one with the little sensual voice uh -huh. is getting, yeah. like, nice. Oh, boy. my God. Uh -huh. Let me tell you. Hold on. It'd be better if I could find it quickly, but hold on. I got it. I'll get it. Big Ups D-Dog says it was the Urban Day Miracle that the shots were discounted from 100 to 50. No Turkey Tom mentioned in checkout. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. All right. I got it. Hang on. Hang on. We'll get there. We'll get there together positively. Uh, he, uh, the sandwich I'm scrolling by. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Got it, got it. There we go, got it. Okay, I got it. I promise it's going to be worth all this rigmarole. Listen to this and try not to cringe to death, okay? So let's just play the first part of the day, okay? This is 10 seconds. Not the one I'm talking about, but it's worth it for context. I'm really going to talk about and worry about today would be members. If you wanted to help out the channel today in a big way, uh -huh. all right? Give some membership. Give some memberships, dude. Let's have that holiday spirit coming through. And it's not just about me. It's about all of us together, right? <laughs> the so let's get the holiday spirit coming through for, because it's not just about me. It's about all of us, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, here is the cringe. Here. <clears throat> and by the way, if we hit $200 in tips, I'll take another shot. If you guys want to see me tipsy, I'm just saying. Okay. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. I can't survive that one, dude. If you well, and then he comes to... back. Uh -huh. And he comes back to the microphone and he's like, well, that, that offer might not stand when I come back. We'll see. I don't know. And then he leaves again. 
Jesus. Just, just to add to it. Like, dude, if you want to drink that bad, just drink. That's fine. You're an adult. Yeah. Th doesn't that imply that he's going to take a shot off camera or something? Oh, maybe. That, that that offer is not going to stand when he comes back? Because it makes it seem like he's going to go and get fucked up and come back and not want to drink anymore. Because he just, he needs it so much. He's tweaking out. Guys, just want to let you know I'm taking shots. If you want to see me tipsy. <laughs> Sounds like a cam girl, you know? <laughs> you guys want to see me take off this top. You know what I mean, guys? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> offer might not stand. I don't know. Yeah, offer doesn't stand when you get back, guys. <laughs> Come on. Oh, we got some good Derek content, too, by the way. I don't know if you have that ready mm. in your business notes, Meerkat, or can I unleash uh, that? No, because like the, the type of shit that I've seen about Derek on Twitter at this point, I'm starting to take him like very seriously because uh, he is yes. he is becoming an actual issue. Okay, the, so, the Instagram yeah. shit, I'm I'm like, it's passing you know, over. Had the someone hit like, me up outside yeah. and be uh -huh. like, "Hey, have you seen this?" And that's not <laughs> not often someone does that to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we're kind of like it's not funny anymore, kind of. Like I know what you're saying, Meerkat. This, this, it's. I'm gonna sort of say one uh, clip, show everybody one thing here. Uh, so, in amongst all the other shit that Meerkat's talking about, if you want to learn about that, you can find it. But uh, there was a uh, tweet by Diamond Girl Seven 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 that had a video, and Derek posted a uh, a gif of a fantastic. Right, the guy said fantastic or whatever. Uh, and he, there was eleven likes to that tweet that Derek Ip posted. It was all Derek sock accounts that liked that post. Eleven yep. of them. Eleven of them. And he liked those tweets eleven times. Like, I know that's low in the totem pole of things he does wrong, but man, that shows some issues. Changing accounts eleven times just to like your own response to diamondgirls seven 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 dot com is that's hardcore like something bad's gonna happen eventually. We're just not there yet, you know? Like, serial killer vibes to the max. Like in his own fucking streams. You know, like in his own tweets with 11 different accounts. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fucked. <laughs> and also, uh, he... Uh, I don't even know how to explain this. They keep <laughs> leaking screenshots from some group chat that he's in where he complains about porn stars blocking him. Which is the actual <laughs> funny part of this story. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, just for fun, I'm gonna read all the 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 uh, the sock names. They're just funny to me. So Derek loves fruit is one, and it's a cherry as the icon. <laughs> Derek loves Pokemon, and <laughs> you got Ash on that one. Derek loves MLB. Derek loves NHL. Derek loves porn. Derek loves X. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Ip different spell. Derek loves raps. Excuse me, Derek loves raps. That's the Toronto Raptors. Uh, Derek yep. IP with just numbers. Derek loves hockey. And my favorite one of this is, it's Derek's, Derek loves hockey, but the username itself is Derek loves NBA. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> and finally, Derek loves AEW. Okay, so there we go. Oh, All yeah. <laughs> Classic Twitter account. Shout out AEW, I guess. Uh -huh. Big ups, AEW. Big fan, big fan, big fan. Okay, real quick. Here's the big I, I teased earlier, okay? This is where we get into some nonsense that I think is worth talking about here. He's going to talk about memberships here. The only real goal that I have set for today oh, not that. is this. Oh, no, yes, it is. That's it. I would absolutely. He's pointing, by the way, to his member's goal. Positively appreciate and love if we could get back. To 500 members i know this has been a rough month because it seems like every time that we're making progress with mm -hmm. members then we lose a ton of them and then we get there again and then we lose just the other day we were at 510 and everyone's excited right <laughs> and then what happens come back from break here we are again 468 mm -hmm. i know if we could maintain and here's the thing here's the this thing is guys definitely one of the things that since I, I left twitch two and a half years ago i'll turn it up i know it's quiet i just never gotten back my attendance is the same as it was on twitch the other levels of support that i get are the same uh -huh. as they were when i was on twitch but the one thing that's never come back is the amount of paid subscriptions that i have on mm -hmm. twitch i regularly had 800 to a thousand paid subscribers and it never really fluctuated it always stayed at that level here on youtube i struggle 
Why? Because it's YouTube. And everyone thinks that Twitch is the, the place to be mm -hmm. when it comes to these memberships. And there's tw Twitch Prime subscribers and stuff like that that get it for free and everything. And it's just, <clears throat> it's rough. I do feel like YouTube has improved in the last two and a half years. I absolutely do. The gifted memberships is a huge thing. They just started that this mm -hmm. year, right? And the fact that now this is working and everything, you mm -hmm. know, it's a good thing, especially now during the holiday season, <laughs> right? People think about, oh, I want to help out the community, other viewers, and they give some memberships, and that's mm -hmm. huge because then you even that's have huge. that. So it was very hard, very mm -hmm. hard to maintain uh, any kind of membership level here on YouTube. Um, so the only thing that I'm really going to talk about and worry about today would be members. If you wanted to help out the channel today, in a big way, all right. Okay. Give some so memberships. Let's memberships. Let's have that holiday spirit coming through, <laughs> and it's not just about me. Okay, we already played that. So we already played that one. But here, and then someone asks about, hey, why the fuck are you asking for this many memberships when your viewership is three hundred? You know, that's pretty insane. Like, how many people out there have more memberships than viewers? But oh no, he has a response for that. Don't worry, don't worry your little ass about that. Of course that. he does. Uh huh. I got a reason for that. Get the fuck out of here. Here we go. You don't get how I can have more memberships than viewers. That's very simple. I've, I've explained this, but a lot of people don't get it. I'm very, <laughs> very, very different from other content creators. Oh, yeah, that's for Why? sure. I've been around for 15 years. Okay. I have a wide variety of viewers who like my content mm -hmm. who are not the same group of viewers. You mm. understand? So, for example, today I'm going to have a certain group of viewers for a holiday special. Tomorrow when I play Mario RPG, some viewers will be here, but we'll have a different group of viewers that will actually mm -hmm. be here. Okay. Right? And then when I play a Street Fighter game, a whole different group of viewers come in. So even though on any given stream I'll have, what, 300 viewers? It's weird because it says I have 500. I never have this many. Mm -hmm. Let's say on a given stream I have 300 viewers. Correct? But that's for that one game. And then different people watch the different genres that I watch. Overall, I definitely have several thousand people who enjoy my content. I wouldn't have on a big playthrough like Alan Wake or something like that. I wouldn't have... You know, five, six, seven thousand views on a video if that weren't the case. So I want to check when's the last time you had a video with seven thousand views? Like, we know what WTW tells us. You know, um, we're talking like, let's, let's just see when the last time he even got close to a seven thousand view video. But that's what he's claiming. I here. think, I think the sickness update video was uh, around like 10k <laughs> okay. maybe because so it was that's... like a 30 minute drama video. Yeah. So that's where mm. the, the views are coming from. Makes sense. Okay. Cool. All right. 50, 50 seconds left right of this but not everyone watches everything uh -huh. people because i'm a variety streamer people pick and choose the content that they choose to consume and then they say oh i want to support it well i'll describe right i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll excuse me i'll subscribe or <laughs> i'll uh i don't know what he said there i'll describe and so when you take a look at the situation and you're like oh well, it says he has 472 members, but on average, he only has 300 viewers. That's 472 members across all of my content. You understand that? All of the genres that I so, cover, all of the different kinds of streams uh -huh, I hold. Uh -huh. That's not 472 members on this one stream. That's across everything. And representative of the amount of mm -hmm. views that I get, it's probably a very small portion. <laughs> very small portion overall. <laughs> Okay, so you got the point. He says he has a huge different groups of people he's serving, and it's a very small portion of that group, and just the only thing he doesn't want to say is gifted memberships. He does not want to say the gifted membership word, even though we all know that's what it's about. Uh, but there you go, guys. That's why he has so many legendary memberships, because of that. Sound good? <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. Speaking because, of uh, yeah. legendary memberships, uh -huh. uh, I hope everybody enjoys the 10 that I gifted in the channel. As you guys know, is the season of giving. So from us to you, thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoy your benefits. Big, Big ups, ups, dude. You have so many benefits. Big ups, that, by the way. So many benefits for that. It's incredible. To Pasta Maker in the house says, back to being a creator, not, no longer a curator. Yeah, the curator experiment has died, hasn't it, Atlas? I know you watch way more real time than me, but has the, Atlas, has the uh, curator thing died fully yet? Uh, I don't know about fully, but it has been a while since uh, since he's been doing that. He's still on Meaningful, for mm -hmm. sure, but oh, not yeah. so much on the Curated. We're not getting rid of Meaningful. Come on. That, that's not going anywhere, but okay. Curator. I hope not. I love Meaningful. 
<laughs> Joel L. Tractor says, Phil gave his dance the Black Friday deal on the drinks. Yeah, I think that's what he did. Yeah. He realized it wasn't working out like he expected because he was expected to pop off with this $400 shit now, but then he got $100. He's like, well, what about 50 everybody? <laughs> Uh, Cyclops yeah, 86 dude. had the same thought. So Black Friday special, 150 for a former Alki. Go ahead, Mary Cat. Yeah. Um, so right before we get a little bit uh, too far into the the episode, because we were pushing like 30 minutes, yeah. I wanted to throw the ball to Atlas and ask him uh, of his um, origin story, basically, and how we all ended up being here. Please. Uh, how would you find out about DSP Atlas? Oh, uh, when I was um, like a teenager, I watched um, SOK, unfortunately. Um, but then I started watching Tevin, and then uh, you guys came around. I got introduced to you guys through Tevin. You know, when he goes away, he's that 24-7 streamer now. He leaves a lot of this kind of stuff on. Um, and there was just so much talent, and the community seemed great. And I was like, well, I want to do something with my free time instead of playing video games all day. So I just started to make videos about DSP. I'm watching them anyway. So yeah, yeah, that's and really it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. And you're that, definitely recent. You're start your channel is less than a year old, right? My man. Yeah, I just started it in August. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I mean, did you push yeah, it this out? is um, really a work ethic that I can really respect. And I've mentioned this before in the show is if you're going to watch all this dumb shit, at least like make something out of it that somebody else might enjoy. So I respect you for doing that, because in the beginning, I started doing that shit, too, because I wanted to catch up on DSP and like the four years that I didn't keep up with them. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had to watch like dozens of hours of shit. So let's just make something out of it at least. Uh, big ups to Dominic who says former alcoholic. Yes. Uh, and big ups to LR says BS because it's always the same people in his chat. Yeah. So yeah, that's another good point of the uh, back to Phil's nonsense about having his different groups. It's always the same five people that are there, isn't it? I, but maybe he's going off like the Jade thing where like, I don't like street fight or I don't like, whatever game we're talking about. I don't like COD, so I'll see you tomorrow. And he thinks like lots of people operate like that, maybe. I don't know. It's tough to rationalize anything. Well, even if you take him at his word, it's very strange that he takes pride in this, the, the idea that people don't actually come to see him, but instead to come and see the game. It's a very weird thing to be like, take pride in. Like people should want to come and see you. They should find you entertaining. I would think that's mm -hmm. the point of being a streamer. Yeah, yeah. But He's so he loves that people come just for the game, which is a I think a terrible business model. <laughs> well, that's how he's done it for fifteen years, dude. We gotta keep it going. But yeah, and but then complete. Go ahead, Mirka. <laughs> I I don't even know if he actually means it when he says it, or is just another cope. Because at the same time, he wants you to believe that people show up for him regardless of what game he's playing, and they have this kind of like a social, you know, it's a parasocial relationship with him that mm -hmm. he talked very extensively about in his Thanksgiving thing. And it, it's like he wants to be both things at the same time and for both of them to be valid, but kind of neither is because mm -hmm. he doesn't play games well enough for people to show up for the games. And he's not entertaining enough for people to show up regardless of what he's doing. That's the, that's yeah, he'll the talk himself in circles <laughs> trying to cope any which way he can when it suits his needs. Oh yeah, well, we definitely have a, definitely a lot of experience with that. Uh, the, the examples of that, for example, you know, just like you said, people aren't showing up for the new game. No one's in for this game. No one likes this game. And then the next day, he's like, people are here to interact with me. They want to see me. They want to ask questions to me. So it's like you're just just saying whatever it takes. Uh, Hate Army in the house says he thinks because Jack Raxer only shows up for Street Fighter, there's a huge crowd of FGC viewers, FPS viewers, RPG viewers, etc. Yeah, that's. I, that's what I was kind of what I was going for trying to say earlier is, yeah, he has, he thinks because some people say I'm going to see you tomorrow for this, that like maybe there's like groups of people like that, I guess. But in the end, it's just coping, as we all know. Big ups, Kevin, yep. for the dancing dog, Japanese style dog. Big ups to the Japanese style dog there. And Logan says the lurking trolls get most of the gifted memberships. His logic is flawed. Memberships do not equal fans or true believers. Yeah. So I want to know. Like, how many did he have before gifts, right? What That's the number that you could kind of extrapolate is the number of people that want to be owners of that elusive membership card, right? So, yeah, you know, I don't remember what it was exactly, but that's what the number we need, right? Because I definitely don't remember either. So, Steve of the Dead saying 300. So, there we go. I, I think 200. so, yeah. Yeah, so something like that. 300 legitimate people in there want to do it. And when you lost your biggest gift for, gifter of, with OIC out, and you see what happens. It's a f struggle to get 500, 
but it's season of giving, guys. So come on, keep it fucking going. Yep. Don't you dare stop. Um, I I wanted to mention to this clip that we listened to earlier about comparing Twitch and YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. he was wrong, and it's been proven because poems uh, on Twitter uh, put out this nice tweet uh, comparing DSP between YouTube and Twitch. And the only difference is really the Prime memberships. That's the only thing that fucks him too much because YouTube doesn't have it. But the numbers are pretty much mm, equivalent. You okay. know, they're, they're very similar numbers. Mm -hmm. In terms of... So, I, yeah, it, go ahead. He, I thought he didn't really have... He said he has always had 800 or 1,000, but I thought I, that wasn't that regular of a thing, was it? I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. I'm going to try and find the post itself because yeah. it has the, the... Oh, yeah, there it is. So we got April... September 2018, he had 1,100. God. And then... But then the month before, in August, he had 359. So you can see what <laughs> happened there. Wow. It was a huge bomb. <laughs> um, I was hold on, regularly... I'm gonna send the, yeah, I posted it in the Discord. You can okay. pull it up if you if you really want to see. But yeah, he is fluctuating in between like 300 to 400. That's 300 is the, the predominant figure that I see. And then we got some figures for 2019 is around 400 to 500. There is a growth in it, but talking about like 1,000 is just purely delusional. Oh, God. Yeah, so I'll show you this image here that kind of says it the best. Um yeah, there's no way a thousand people really want to give DSP money for a membership or a, a <laughs> sub or whatever. No way. So this shows it the yeah. best, kind of. So you see here we have normal uh, hovering around 500, you know? And then we get to this December 1,733. <laughs> so of these months I'm showing you here, which appears to be, you know, about 12 of them, one month is above 1,000. No other month crosses 600. No other month crosses 550. But I was regularly, regularly above a thousand. I guess is this not counting the? Oh, this is gifted and prime. So yeah, these are these are the real numbers with gifted and prime. Holy shit! Oh wow! So that's just complete bullshit. <laughs> I was regularly above one thousand. Where's regularly? Regularly oh, in the month bullshit. of December. Come <laughs> yeah. on. Regularly in the month of December of 2018, I had it. All right, so you don't, if, if you, just in case you think it might be BSing you, here's another set, 2021. So the highest of this is 720 and 48. That's the biggest. And most months are around 600. So we have had some growth here, but just say whatever the fuck you want, I guess. So I'm at, who cares about facts? Just say numbers. Yeah, it was regularly around 800 and 1,000. Okay. Yeah, yeah, his MAGFest panel was packed, and his numbers are 800 to 1,000. Come standing on. Standing room only, dude. <laughs> people standing room only. People were waiting outside. I think he saw people, like, doing stuff outside in the hallway and said, oh, they must be here for me, you know? They're trying to Yeah, they were talk. waiting for their friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think happened there, yeah. <laughs> they're waiting for the bathroom. They're in the bathroom line. Holy shit, dude, they're lining up, John. <laughs> Check it out. That's the complete tweet, by the way. There we go. So you see... The, there's there's one I put, I put the same one twice, uh, but you can see that there was one month of one thousand seven hundred thirty three, and the highest outside of that is seven hundred forty eight. So yeah, okay, sound good. Eight hundred and a thousand regularly, regularly, regularly. All right. Uh, yeah. Really a word. In Smith. other news. Yes. Please. Uh, yeah. In other news, your boy Philip. Um, went viral on Reddit again. Ah, yes. I, I wouldn't say viral, but his post does have 4.7 thousand upvotes uh, on the subreddit r slash sad cringe, which is very <laughs> fitting for him. Nice. Yeah, I, I love that uh, for him. <laughs> there is a clip that is 30 seconds long, and the title of the clip is called Disrespectful Streamer Desperately Asks His Chat for help yeah i got the audio um, here we go i got the audio for it fantastic i don't get it none of the buttons slide so how do i do this mario. anyone know you... it's mario by the way just keep that in mind you guys were telling you me before how to do it but now no one's talking <laughs> why is the chat silent hello Ow! <laughs> hello <laughs> This dude sucks, man. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Literally a kid's game.
<laughs> that was it. So that got oh, placed man. on uh, cringe, whatever, like, sad cringe. <laughs> yes. Classic. And I do have a few replies. You might say I curated them because yes, I please. thought they were funny enough. And I'm going to read them out right now. So first one goes as follows. This guy's entire internet saga is filled with L's. And this has almost 3,000 upvotes. Oh. Then we have, at least he's lies. not jacking off on stream. Oh, that's true. But, you know, at Factual. least he's not. Factual. And my favorite one, the most curated comment was, I paused the DSP hate video to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a W comment right there. That's a W comment. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. Uh, but there we go. So uh, making another rounds of of Reddit. Let's see if the let's see if the sad cringe gets a me reference today. You know what he'd say though. <laughs> you go to a, a, a channel, a, a, a subreddit called Sad Cringe. Think about that. Think about that. What do you want to see there? People being happy? <laughs> no. You want to see people sad? You want to see people cringe? What? Think about your life. Yeah. That's what he's gonna say. You know. Like, would, uh, that's what you like to watch. You need the white coats to come and get you because uh -huh. you're mentally ill. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's gonna make it seem like you're the one who's sad and cringe. That's why you go there. You see, yeah. you're the lol cow. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> hey, speaking of which, that's a great transition. Uh -huh. Today, Sunday, is supposed to be the stream in which I quote DSP will be on this Sunday's lol cow podcast, whether yes. he likes it or not. But they haven't scheduled or um published any kind of broadcast or anything so nobody really has any idea some people are speculating that the the mysterious female interview might be today um and other people are predicting that maybe they're just gonna watch clips of dsp make fun of them and look for a response which i think is pretty likely that's what i'm guessing what else could it be but what do you think atlas what are we waiting for here today it's not nothing scheduled like meerkat said though so we have no idea what's happening today but there you go what do you think Atlas? yeah i'm I'm not quite sure. I've been keeping up with the Lol Cow cast since they've been putting out the episodes. But as far as I'm just making fun of DS, making fun of DSP and looking for a response, they kind of did that already in a previous episode. So I don't think that that's going to work if that's what they're going to try and do again. He claims he doesn't care. We all know it hurts his feelings deep down inside, but whether or not he talks about it. He, yeah, he's the one that talks about the fucking show the most, like Turkey Tom said. Um, also, yeah. someone else said, you want to get to that Omega on video, uh, Meerkat? I do have... Uh, um, sure. Video. Well, I didn't watch it. That's all I had to mention is that DSP was featured in Exhibition of Stupid People, episode 275 by Omega on, a mm -hmm. YouTuber with 118k subs. And video has a little bit over 10,000 views in two days. That's about it. I haven't seen it. Uh, what about you guys? I watched that part that he put out. And I do have the audio for just that part. It's like a minute and a half. So here, let's listen to the part. He, it, the whole part about DSP was like, I don't know, 10 minutes total. But here's like the kind of closing of the, of the thoughts here on DSP. I don't need that. I'm, I'm successful. I have a business. Except that last night, I got the notification that I have no money. And I was like, that really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Great editing. <laughs> the money I get from tips, I'm transferring to my bank account. Um... So essentially, I'm, I must be I, I'm overdrawn. Mm -hmm. Um, for them to tell me that I have that you know the the notice that you are you know no balance or whatever. If you'd like to help Darkside Phil in his time and desperate times of need, coffee.com forward slash right, the real omega nine eight seven three. You can donate any amount you like, and I'll make sure he gets it totally. When you're watching that lol cow show, oh yeah, I'm milking people today. Like huh? Like what? That's you think that's fine? You're milking a human. Okay? Do you think it's a bit ironic that you, Dark Side Phil, who forgot to turn their stream off and camera by extension to milk himself, is having a look down at those who have streams commentating on others that you have determined to be a form of milking? Is it ironic? It feels ironic. Not even for sus, you're not milking them for milk, you're milking them for profits, <laughs> for money. Before. You're dehumanizing the person. You're turning them, you're literally categorizing them as a as an animal. The name of the show is the Lol Cow Show or the Lol Cow Podcast. Because I'm the Lol Cow, right? Pretty much, yes. In fact, your actions over the years have built to you the reputation that you are a lol cow. Many lol cows cannot laugh at themselves. They can't do it. You mention milking an audience, but that's what you do when you e-beg for donations all the time. I bothered to go and click on one of your streams recently. This, oh, and the very moment I clicked on it, oh, you were away. asking for oh, donations no. to pay for one of your bills. 
bitch, if you're successful, why are you begging it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, as you can see, Dark Side Phil loves the Lol Cow podcast, and I can't wait for him to go on one day and then rage Oh my god! Him. So there we go. So it's basically just uh, talking about... I love the, the beginning. If you couldn't hear it, sorry the audio was so low. I don't know what's going fuck on with that. But here, let's just hear the beginning clip again, because that's the funniest part. I don't need that. I'm, I'm successful. I have a business. Except that last night, I got the notification that I have no money. <laughs> so there we go. That was a good cut there by the guy. <laughs> but yeah. That was pretty much it. It's just that basic, I mean, the level one basic analysis that takes two seconds to realize that Phil says he's so successful, he doesn't need the Law Cow Live podcast. But then the very same day, he says, guys, I need help, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know the whole song and dance yeah. there. That's, um, it, it's really cool that we got more and more bigger channels uh clapping his cheeks because mudahar also did i watched his segment today it's like a 10 minute or something segment mm -hmm. um so that's mudahar from the some ordinary gamers channel it's got a bunch of millions of subs uh he talked a bunch of shit about dsp you know begging kind of like in the clip that we just heard yeah but it was very entertaining because i know he's a big channel with a big platform yep that's why phil would never go have be interviewed by him because man, Rudhar is the one that offered him money for that five thousand, but Phil knows he can't be on with that. Because Craig had to be, ha Craig had to catch up, but Mudahar would not have to catch up. So it would be too dangerous of, of an interview for him for sure. Which probably why he th why he pulled out of the Turkey Tom interview possibility because he knew like Mudahar and Turkey Tom kind of working together, you know. So it's like, oh, I can't do that now. I know he. Yeah, yeah I really wish we could have got the. I really yeah, wish we could have got the Mudahar interview. Honestly, that mm -hmm. uh, that would have been. It, it probably was the best chance of being, you know, another great one. But, you know, it's not going to happen. Fuck, no interviews happening again. Until he gets desperate again or someone else comes along that's big enough. Like, who's a mainstream, middle-of-the-road YouTuber that starts talking about DSP? And then maybe we'll get it. Maybe it's June the fucking King. Who knows? Because Phil's still holding out hope for that, of being great, you know? Like, he still, I don't know, thinks that June the King is going to do something different than Turkey Tom did. Then... Septicron did, yeah. and all these people that make the documentaries about DSP. I mean, how many ways can you, how many different lights are we supposed to see you in that's going to be different than what the facts show, you know? But Oh, that, uh, that's a good point. I just remember the guy that made the Boogie documentary send DSP like a $20 super chat or something. Do you think there's some interest from him to make Ooh. a DSP documentary? <laughs> but I would really would include... enjoy that. I like the Boogie one, to be honest. Even though I don't particularly care for Boogie, I thought the documentary was well shot. It looked good. Yeah, but th wouldn't that require for the guy to fly out to Ranton to actually meet DSP? You think that would even be possible? Uh, no. DSP There's... letting people yeah. get footage of the snort for it? Hell yeah, yeah. no. That's the problem. <laughs> no. The place is too messy. He would never show it. He can never show it online because he doesn't want people to know how he actually lives. Like, he, 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 look, say what you will about Boogie, but at least the yeah, house was, yeah, like, so somewhat... A neutral location, like... It was nor livable, right? I don't think Phil's house is like that. I don't think, you know, you can't walk around. In Boogie's place, it looks like it's of normal cleanliness, not the cleanliness place in the earth, but it seemed fine. Phil's house is not like that at all, in any way. Yeah, maybe you they know? can meet at some, uh, some studio or the guy's hotel room or something like that would be, like, one of those interviews. <laughs> I mean, that... He, there was just so many levels to why he can never do that unless you're right, they meet somewhere else and it's only Phil and he's like, well, my wife can't be here because blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, but excuses aside, do you think he wants to do it? Seeing how impactful the Boogie documentary was and how many people talking about Boogie now, do you think DSP actually wants to do it? I think DSP would love to. I, I think his ego would absolutely feed off of that. It's just everything that goes um, against him is so obvious to everybody who, you know, interacts with him that he knows that he can't really. I think he likes being I, important. I agree with that. He likes being important, so that makes him feel important. He would definitely like that. He would definitely like that aspect of it. But then the whole internet would just make fun of him more. Like, what did Biggie get out of, the, out of this documentary? Did he, was he paid for that? Did anyone know? Oh, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I, I guess, well, I, I don't know. I haven't even watched the thing. I just oh, know it's pretty, it. yeah. pretty well made. It's worth a watch. I mean, it's, it's cringe, but it's worth a watch. The, the, like, the, oh, it's definitely cringe. The bathtub <laughs> scenes or something else. I, There's I so much it. footage in the bathroom. That's one of the reasons DSP could never do it, because he's got that bathroom that doesn't work, right? So oh, yeah, it's right. just an automatic no. 
They're running out of things they can show that actually work. K kitchen? Can't do that. That doesn't work. <laughs> Bathroom? Well, that doesn't work either. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Miracle, you gotta watch it. It's it's worth it's it's worth watching. Just uh, I don't know what what do you think of it, Atlas as a whole? They I thought the ending was kind of bad when they kind of like I found the psychedelics. I think you just needed to have some way to end it up. So this was kind of like the story arc they're going with is maybe this will be his way out of his depression or whatever. Because at the end, Meerkat spoilers, they take mushrooms as a way to get over depression or whatever. You know what I'm saying, Atlas? Yeah, I just the I I really enjoyed the documentary. I know it didn't get the most positive reception, but as far as the documentary goes, it was well done. It's just Boogie being the subject is it's a it's a rough thing to have to do because Boogie just sucks. Like just point blank, the guy is awful. He's not fun in yes. most instances. Uh and he is constantly talking down on himself the entire time and it just makes you miserable. But yeah. I do believe at the end, in the credits, that it does say that Mike Klum did uh, not pay Boogie. Boogie wasn't paid for that. Whether or not I believe that, I don't know. But I want to oh. say that that's what was at the end there. Yeah. It, it, it's all this weird shit about how I, they go to the job office, and Phil would never do this. But Boogie does it like the st typical Boogie fashion. It's like, all right, what can you offer to like an employee or whatever? That part. And, and Boogie says like, well, uh, I'm morbidly obese. I have depression. I have a history of being abused. Like, why are you saying this now? You know? Yeah, this <laughs> this clip, I, I saw this on Instagram, and the caption was like something along the lines of uh, when I tell my best friend to get a job or something like that. And I fucking <laughs> yeah, laughed. Yeah. It was like, why are you saying, if you, if you Google my name, you'll see I was arrested for shooting in a place. I was... I mean, porno it's like what just are you just trying to be cool like i don't it was just, he's trying to be cool by being so like self-deprecating but that's like the most cringe shit ever like that's boogie's style these days to be his the mo maximum self-deprecating to hopefully make you feel bad for him i don't know what's the strategy well, you know afterwards he was like well we had talked to her beforehand before the cameras were rolling and they basically told me i was never going to get a job so i decided to just have fun with it and just completely shit all over the interview and make myself look like an ass oh, which i don't Christ. think is the point of doing the documentary why would that's not the kind of thing you should put into that it didn't Very make any cool. sense to me i wonder what dsp would do if he went to a job place like that you know like well i haven't been working for 15 years okay <laughs> i've been fired i was laid off from sikorsky 15 years ago for no reason i was one of the top people like that would be funny but he would never take it seriously he's like oh, okay i'm doing this for a documentary so just tell me what you want to hear i'll do it that's what he'd do you know not be fun at all and yeah, if you ever think... ask him to learn anything, he's just going to tell you to get a lawyer because it's not in his job description Dude, or whatever Meerkat, did you like... hear that i posted on twitter <laughs> what okay About so I, which, I did which one yeah so the best buy i did the best buy special four hours obviously and uh we found a clip where he explains why he what happened with best buy because you know he was fired for using the employee discount which gave him a grand total of two dollars and seventy cents off of his purchase so yeah that's this not is enough to, classic that's not enough for to fire somebody in general terms right you might say you don't do that again but it's not a fireable offense so what happens well phil uh, says himself the real story is he was hired to be this kind of biz, Best Buy for Business salesperson where they sell business-style stuff, internet stuff to businesses, okay? But mm -hmm. they, they require that you take an internal test to learn about servers, okay? And Phil failed it, the first test, obviously. And I want to remind you, these internal tests are usually bullshit, where, like, one of the questions is, what are we learning about now? And, like... Is it servers? Is it unicorns? <laughs> is it football? And you have to choose, you know? He failed that. Then goes to the thing and says, well, I'm not learning. This is not my job description. Why do I have to do this? This was not in my job description when you hired me. And if you do this, oh don't, I don't want to do it anymore. Get a lawyer if you want me to take this test anymore. Get a lawyer. He says, get for a like lawyer. A, for a test about, like, IT servers and stuff? That he a is lawyer? working. Yes, he is working to sell that stuff, and he said, "Get a lawyer if you want me to take this test." Now, of course, that's because he said it's. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he says it's illegal for it's illegal, the yeah. state of Connecticut to change what his job description is and expect him to uh, like do things that they didn't disclose to him before he got signed on or whatever. Uh -huh. But yep. oh my just God. the worst employee on the planet. Get him out of here. Yeah, exactly. So that, but my theory is they were okay. We got to get this kid out of here. They didn't even make him take the test again. So that shows they're like, all right, whatever, fuck it, he's done. Let's get him on the floor. So he went to the he went to selling shit on the floor like a normal ass employee, which he said he was above though. Uh, and then the first chance they got when he fucked up, 
which he was doing, you know, buying multiple systems that, you know, in general can't just be for personal use because he was getting money for the tournaments that he used them on. And they said, get the fuck, get your ass out of here, you know? And then, then that, that's, that's what made him fire him a hundred percent in my mind. Cause who, who, what employee on earth, what employer on earth is going to have an employee like that? Hey guys, you got to take an internal training test. Get a lawyer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they should have fired him right then to be honest, but you know. You know, that's what it is. Yeah, this dude, <laughs> clearly, it, it, clearly, even back in the day when he was remotely employable, he was still like the opposite of employee of the year. He's oh, no, fucking opposite. trash. Opposite. Yeah, yeah. Does not. Anyways, there's so many examples of this. Another thing we found yesterday is a good time to get into the 3D theory, Meerkat. If you oh, no. <laughs> Oh, but the but people in chat are going to love this one. This is a, a diamond in the rough. <laughs> okay, so I'm watching all the Ask the Kings on WPIG. We're on episode like four or five now. Uh, episode two, but we're in like the fourth edition of Ask the King. And uh, I tell you, man, there's always something that you just slips through the cracks of insanity. And oh, we found one. Listen, the question person asked was about 3D games and what do you think about them? That was the question at hand. And here is how Phil... Decided to ask, answer it, okay? Just hold on your fucking hats. By the way, the other thing... Oh, God, why is it so quiet? I'm going to turn up right now. I don't know why everything's so fucking quiet. I'll turn up right now so everyone hears it from the beginning. Right. Yeah, turn that shit up. Jack it up, dude. I'm jacking it. Right Make now. it clip. Going nuts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the other thing... You ever notice something that real life really isn't that much 3D? Like if someone throws a softball at... All right, starting it again. By the way, the other thing... You ever notice something that real life really isn't that much 3D? Like if someone throws a softball at you, do you really see this thing coming at you? Like, no, you see a 2D thing, you get hit in the fucking face. Real vision has depth perception to a point, but not to the point where this 3D movies are trying oh to push my it. God. So, by the way, the other thing... <laughs> I'll just keep it there for the audience, that visual. Dude, he says... In 3D, there's in real life, there's depth perception to a point. But when you see a softball, you see a 2D thing and it hits you in the face. <laughs> that sounds like 3D to me. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you see a 2D thing and it hits you in the face. <laughs> so some people are theorizing this is why he's so bad at games, right? Well, I mean, because maybe he really he lives in 2D, right? <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say about this segment. It's just what, what's so good about it is you you don't even need to think about a comment. It's just it, it hits you immediately when the dude says real life is not 3D. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, what, what what can I say about this? Two years later, by the way, he would buy a 3D TV because oh, hey, yes. <laughs> why not? <laughs> he complains like fuck about 3D even more than that clip. And then he, you know, two years later moves to Seattle. Yep, got to get a fucking 3D TV that I'll never use. Sound good? But anyways, that's that clip. Uh, it, it, it's it, un infathomable that this was a valedictorian who, like we played last week, thinks bridges are faster than sloths, which is another great mental <laughs> leap there. Bridges yeah, are faster dude. than sloths. So we keep finding these examples of Really, valedictorian style Phil uh, is is coming in hot here. Um, I'm so happy you're doing the Ask the Kings. By the way, I know there's so much gold throughout the years in those, and I'm glad that you're the person who's taking on the task of sifting through them to find the gold. I was surprised I never heard about that before. The 3D thing, man. Like, how does that? That's such a. That's worse than for me. That's like one of the stupidest things he's ever said. Like, that's worse than like rainy day fund. It's it's yeah. worse than that in my mind. Uh, but it, Jesus, it's. Definitely worse than the Jasper seeing in 60 FPS. Yes. <laughs> that, <laughs> with that, you can try and make some sense out of it. I don't know, you know, maybe Jasper's used to looking at 30 FPS and the other thing's too smooth and it trips him out. You can look for some kind of logic. This is just like, not, not it. This is not it. 2D and it hits you in the face. <laughs> what I wonder what he sees when he crosses the street. Look at all these 2D cars. <laughs> Hope they don't hit me. Anyway. It looks like Frogger to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe from <laughs> a top-down perspective, maybe it's just, you know, a side-scroller crossing <laughs> the street. I don't know. DSP vision is crazy. Ooh, We're never going to be able to figure it out. But I have something for you guys. Please. Um, 
DSP, as every year, of course, is making his best and most disappointing games of the year list. But this year, he is doing a gimmick. He is doing the fan-voted best playthroughs of the year. A very self-indulgent um, and masturbatory thing for himself. Um, and kind of that that's it. Yep. I, I don't have much else to say about it. So I, I it, of course we I'll read the end. Just the I have the tweet on screen. Uh, not the tweet. Yeah, this is the community post. Excuse me. Uh, please nominate the games you felt were my best overall playthroughs of the year. Just after Christmas, I'll be tallying up the no, no, nominations and a final poll will be created on which you will vote on the best playthroughs that happened in 2023. This will, in turn, be a part of my year-end series. In addition to my most disappointing games countdown, as well as my personal picks, my favorite of the year. Ba ba ba. Whatever. So this is a new thing. Sound good? Uh, I guess he wants engagement more. Cool. Yeah, well, I, I guess. Else to say, I guess. Well, it, he managed to make it all about himself again, because this is about him and and his uh, best playthroughs. It's not even about the game. If the game was fun or not, they can nominate fucking Call of Duty, the <laughs> multiplayer playthrough for all. I, I don't know. So I ask you. I'll ask Atlas first as the guest. What is the trolls play here, and what should be voted in? Is it scorn? Oh. That would come to my mind first. Would be scorn. I think that's the funniest. But what do you think? See, I, I don't, I don't even know. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know. The, my first thought was giving it to Mario Wonder after all of the low support streams would make me laugh. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's the epic play. Meerkat, we go to you. You're the next member of the council. <laughs> the internal council. Oh, I was muted. I'm sorry. Okay. But I, I got one for you that's really juicy. Remember Wo Long Fallen Dynasty and how much he fucking hated it? Mm. That's my favorite playthrough. <laughs> Every single video was him talking about how much he hates the game, how much he wants feedback, how much he's playing it because of you guys. And that, to me, encapsulates a very signature DSP playthrough. Because you got all the stuff. You got the begging, you got the I'm doing this for you guys, so please support. You, you got a game that is a Souls-like that he didn't like very much. Mm. So we, we check all the boxes. Yeah, I see a lot of a lot of people are saying Atomic Heart as well. It, it, that's only good if he really plays it again, though, because he's not going to play these games again. But I agree, Atomic Heart is good. Atomic Heart... I, the, yeah, go ahead. I seen that the first time the other day on Meerkat stream. I'd never seen any footage, and I, after seeing it in chat, that's a way better idea than my dumbass idea. Atomic Heart <laughs> is really funny, because he was so uncomfortable. <laughs> And the best, my favorite part is not the refrigerator. When the two hot robots are standing there, he starts looking at the scenery. You know, he starts looking around <laughs> yep. the wall. You know? <laughs> the, the refrigerator's right in your face, but there's also, you know, some uh, sneaky style trying to look away <laughs> moments. Uh, but yeah, the funniest one, I think. Yeah, so the, the main three choices are what Meerkat said, Wo Long, Scorn, Tears of the Kingdom, that's good, too, because he, he said that it sucks. Remember, he's like, oh, oh, they're sucking it. Remember, he said, like, whoever that guy's name. Who's the guy that does the award show? Oh, yeah. They're sucking his um, ass. Jeff, Jeff Keighley. Uh-huh. Spreading up Zelda's cheeks or whatever. Remember all that nonsense? That'd be kind of funny, too, if he did choose that. And uh, also, he went viral on TikTok because he was bad at the game and on Twitter as well. So that, that one had some moments that were really good. Yep. And he said, like, it gives you too much to do. Who's going to spend time, you know, having fun with the game? That's just too much fluff and stuff, <laughs> whatever that. Yeah, yeah heaven forbid game. it have side content. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was, uh, how, how, how dare they have stuff for, for me to do if I want to, but I don't have to, but I could if I want to. How dare they? How dare you, Nintendo? Um, yeah, and they, um... Uh, he got so exposed on the parts where you're supposed to be creative and actually put together some kind of a device or something, some kind of contraption to pass a puzzle. Mm -hmm. He got exposed so hard. <laughs> uh, shall we? Shall we break some news real quick? Oh, we please. have an update on on the Lol Cow Live episode from today. It's gonna drop in about two and a half hours, and the tweet says "DSP response!" exclamation mark. Oh. So they're probably gonna be watching his clip and talking about him, which. That that should be pretty pretty interesting. Let's see. Yep, it says new. Yep, you're right. That's what it says. So, I, I, what do you think? I, I, that's not as hype as it could have been. Uh, but I guess a lot of people. That's what we all guess is that it's going to be watching clips. But yeah, DSP response. Well, I'll take what I can get. 
I, I'm not really all that on board with the lolcow podcast thing. So if if they give me something that is fun, then cool. If not, then they can just do whatever they want to do. Yeah, here's the I'm thing. I'm cool with it either way. They're, they're like the cat though, and and DSP is the mouse because they're just they got to keep DSP strung along here for the you know it's good for them to have DSP mentioning them and talking about them and keep that drama fucking going. But the more yep. Phil does it, he said, I don't want to do this. I, I, don't get, I don't get involved in that, guys. I don't get involved in that. I don't care about you. I made a commitment that I was not going to get in the drama anymore, guys, for you guys. And he can't. He can't resist it. It's just too juicy. No. You know that. But in a way, doesn't that make him a part of the podcast if they just have a back and forth and endlessly? Yeah. And this, in this way, he doesn't get any money for it. So, of course, he did the most yeah. DSP thing possible. <laughs> don't get paid for it. Do it anyway. Give them all the benefits anyway. Don't get any money for it. Sound good? <laughs> yeah. I said that in one of my videos. He had this whole back and forth with Tom, but the the smart idea, the businessman in me would have been like, well, why didn't you just do the podcast and get paid to do it instead of looking terrible and not getting paid? You could have done one or the other, and instead <laughs> yeah. you chose to do, you got nothing. Way to go. <laughs> it's got good gods. Oh, yeah, because of his morals. Uh-huh, Poulter. Uh-huh. That's what's but holding him back. But if they keep back. taking shots... He's going to he's going to respond eventually like a hundred of them could miss. But all you need is one good shot and DSP will talk about you ad nauseum, as he loves to say. Uh -huh. So you just keep taking them. Yeah. You know, what's it? The We got to rename our show, by the way. Was it the bullying podcast? I think. What did DSP the recommend? <laughs> he said, like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It was something like we yeah. bully people all day podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a horrible name. You're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to be. The bullying people yeah. all day podcast. <laughs> I I would be cool with doing it. I got no problem with this, or or something associated with milking. I don't know the the milkman podcast or something. Milking not for sustenance or something. There we go. Milking. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> no substance needed. Milking. Okay, but that should be hype. Dropped in three hours. That'll be live, uh, in at three p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So right after we finish, you can watch the All Cow Live Show. Uh, have you been watching the episodes though, uh, Atlas? Are you keeping up with it? I have, yeah. What's your thoughts so far? Yeah. Um, I see. I'm very torn on it because, like, the farmers episode was boring as sin to me. I don't particularly care about. I, I like Mudahar. Not. I don't know who the third guy was. And Turkey Tom's okay, but they didn't really feel like they had an investment in the show whatsoever. They're just kind of there hanging out, which is fine. But obviously, people came for the lol cows, mm -hmm. and Boogie is just insufferable all the way through, all the time. <laughs> Nobody likes Boogie, from my understanding. Like, working with him, I mean. <laughs> Which, obviously, who wants to work with that guy? Um, but Wings is coming off pretty good, as uh, from my from the way I see it. But mm -hmm. I kind of have a skewed perspective. I like Wings. Oh, but, you like Wings as a lol cow, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want him to do better. I do genuinely want him to, like, fix himself. Where, like, with Boogie and DSP, like, I'm just, I just like to point and laugh. I don't actually care if they do any better. Mm -hmm. But I think Wings has some traits where he is a likable guy to some extent. He's just, uh, he's down on himself all the time and refuses to do anything about it, mm -hmm. which. Yeah, from, from what I've seen, Wings is kind of, like, there. And he's kind of like he he's there for the paycheck. Like he'll take part in the conversations, but it's not like he's just doing what I have to do to get this show. I'm gonna do this show, and that's it. I'm not gonna say anything crazy. I'm not gonna. I'm, he's not acting at all. He just I'm wings. This is my thoughts. I don't give a shit, you know. And it's just he comes off the most natural by far because Boogie's just insane. Uh, so as you know, as you do. But Mirka, yeah. you haven't watched anything, right? much of it happened. um i i did watch the first episode but it all had to do with the boogie documentary like i said i haven't seen it so i wasn't invested in it mm -hmm. but whenever they talk about dsp i might tune in just the just out of curiosity yeah so we'll see phil will definitely devour the bait though he cannot resist so don't worry about that at all we'll be hearing about his clap back oh, they're talking about it i don't want to hear about it guys like i told you guys we don't get in the drama and then the next stream will be like so i heard uh of course i haven't watched any of it but I heard that these guys were talking about me saying blah, blah, blah. And he knows exactly what they're talking about. Just get ready for it. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> or or are we going to get a bunch of sneak dissing that is, uh, you know, as you guys know, I'm different. Not like some other people that take happiness in the misfortune of others. So and so and so that he does every day. Mm -hmm. So you never know. I got to say, I'm getting so 
I'm getting so tired of the I'm different speech. We get it about <laughs> once a stream at this point. We uh -huh. get it. You're you're a unique kind of style individual. Like, you don't do it anymore. I, I'm tired of hearing it. As someone who has to watch every day, I'm over it. Please stop. <laughs> the marketing speech now. Now we're on levels of marketing speech that we've never heard before. Because he has these, like, groups of statements he has to get out. And, like, once yep. he starts it, you know exactly what's coming. But you're like... Yeah, now, guys, now listen, I'm different. And, you know, you have the I'm different speech coming up. Like, guys, listen, I'm, a, I'm one guy, okay? I don't have all these hours. Then you get that speech coming. They're all he just pulled out of a hat. He has like five or six to pull from, and they're all the same. You know, and, you know, you know what you get. You get what you get what you pay for there. Uh, but um, anyways, get to a few shout outs here in, in here. Ira says the audience exists to entertain Phil. He never engages with his chat unless he gets stuck in a game and then to berate them for not helping quickly. Yeah, his audience is not there to interact and have fun with him. It's to give him content, which, which is what? what? Good questions when I ask for them and help with the game. I think that's pretty much it. What else do you get? I mean, is that good? <laughs> yeah. LR, that's pretty much yeah. what Murahar said. Yeah, yeah. The, the audience is there for, for Phil and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. You're helping me. I'm, I'm not here for you. You're here for me, and you help me, all right? Uh, LR in the house says 800 subs on Twitch is like $2,000. His 600 members across both channels is 1.8K. It's not that far off. DSP is a con artist. All right. Yep. 100%. Cyclops86 says orgasmic growth for real members for my content. Orgasmic growth. That's what. That's the stuff that's growing from the incident stain that's on this on the carpet mm. that's <laughs> orgasmic growth those mushrooms that are there that's orgasmic growth <laughs> yeah cyclops yeah, maybe maybe boogie's been eating those mushrooms that's oh. why they helped them so well <laughs> yeah those will cure the depression the orgasmic oh, yeah. mushrooms oh yeah, they're gonna really give nice. you a lot of other stuff but they're gonna cure something <laughs> they have to something uh steve of the dead joining the lol cow podcast is what i heard cyclops 86 said that you have to ask steve about that yep that's that's the well, big reveal steve left i, I can debunk this mm -hmm. Please uh, debunk. steve has signed a multi-year contract with us he signed the maximum and there's an nda in it and there's a no co no competition clause which means he's not allowed to compete on any other show so too bad uh we will take it up in court if mm -hmm. anything like this happens so we're on your ass steve we're gonna investigate or we we gotta just hope that steve didn't do what dsp did and sign the contract before he read anything of it and then after you read it say you don't like it and then back out because that's what <laughs> phil did with machinima so hopefully steve you don't do yeah. that okay <laughs> i think i think that's what he also did with all the credit cards when, when they were all maxed out you're like wait i, I don't think i like this anymore <laughs> yeah Dude, that's he said, and he also says in the exact same rant about that shit. I'm a business style person. I'm not like some kid, okay? I know what's in contracts. After saying I read the contract without reading it, and then read it and saw the stuff he doesn't like. So anyway, yeah, sound good. So, <laughs> uh, you, you got some more shout outs to give, or yeah, we can move on. There's some more shout outs. But we'll get those later. If you yeah, want. yeah. Well, there's one thing that we've been avoiding so far, but it's unavoidable. Uh -oh. Uh, any of you guys watch his Thanksgiving stream? Oh no, you had to say it. Watched part of it. Um, yeah, I, I have quite a bit to say about that because it it fucking annoyed the shit out of me. So there's a couple of times a year where he knows it's gonna be um, a hype stream, quote unquote. So he's gonna make his money and everything's gonna be all right. Yeah. So these streams are the Halloween stream, the Christmas stream, the birthday, and the Thanksgiving special, because they're all holidays. Yes. And he knows that people are going to show up, give him money. So nowadays, he doesn't even feel like he want to do something special for it or something interesting. Uh, but the gimmick is that he's, he's not going to beg that specific day. So that's what he did on, on Thanksgiving as well. He showed up. He's like, guys, today I'm not going to talk about that stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't expect anything today. And of course, since it's Thanksgiving, people gave him the money that he was, uh, let's be honest, expecting. Mm -hmm. So everything was cool. He didn't feel like doing anything special at all. So people voted for him to play Call of fucking Duty on his <laughs> Thanksgiving special. He played Call of Duty. Uh, but the whole stream started off with the mother of all, uh, I don't even know how to call it, delusion copium segments. Okay. 
because it was like you know it's a dsp thanksgiving segment if we've if you've watched one of them in the past you've seen it all but now it's completely not completely but it's it's much worse because he had to bring up also how he's better than other people how his content is better how he's so grateful for you guys in like a huge cult segment and yeah. honestly this might be one of his worst streams of the entire year if you look at the actual quality of the content and i know for him saying quality of the content is is almost like you contradicting yourself but even for his standards this was insufferable self-indulgent cultish of uh, absolutely embarrassing mm -hmm. uh fair point my, my i guess my one take first before you get to talk atlas is how yep. <clears throat> every single year at the end of the year is like i saw that uh, hate army just said the same thing every year is the best year ever every year was the best right. all the past was shit all the changes we made were successful all the shit we used to do we don't do anywhere made the right choice there all that's the best. Everything's the best. All the past years were horrible. So he can't even take a second to say like, all right, well, you know, we did the we did the interview. Maybe one of the best idea or something like that. No, 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 no. All you get at the end of the year is everything's the best of all time. And then a few years later, we'll hear about how 2023 was his worst year of his life or something, you know? Like that's just how it always is. Uh, so as usual, he did that. The, he played the card of everything's awesome. I love this. And as Red Kell just said, I stick to my guns. I, I'm known yep. for sticking to my guns, but I made a lot of changes. And I'm basically a different person anymore. But I also stick to my guns for 15 years. But I've also made a lot of changes. I'm a different person. I'm like a snake, shedding my skin. But I also stick to my guns, okay? So it's just the classic shit. Uh, but Atlas, what were your takes on the Thanksgiving Day madness? Yeah, I actually did a video, I think it came out yesterday was that one, uh, about that whole uh, appreciation segment that he did. And I was just absolutely astonished that he could not go 30 seconds without being negative um, in an appreciation <laughs> segment on Thanksgiving. That like the one day that you might be able to do it, he just couldn't manage. And if I had the time, I wish I could have calculated the ratio from positive talk to negative talk, like they do for the pre-streams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it would have the negative talk would have blown it out of the water. There was no way that positive stood a chance. It oh, was God, uh, no. it was amazing. <laughs> well, I have kind of an alternative on that. We got it through um, shout out to DSP Gout Gout on oh, Twitter, who uh -huh. makes a breakdown of the the time span of I don't know how to even call it, but how how much time he spends on any segment. Yes. And for the Thanksgiving special, he spent forty six minutes begging shout outs in a. I don't know, a thankful segment, the Thanksgiving segment. This yeah, that's was 51%. The one I'm, thankful, yeah. I'm thankful for you guys. Yeah. I'm thankful for my wife, my house, all this nonsense. Yeah. Oh, you know what he wasn't thankful for? Something that I didn't hear him being thankful for is his parents. I don't think he mentioned him once. I might be wrong. He probably didn't pay attention, but he didn't mention him once. He's not thankful. He was for more thankful for fucking Jasper, who he called his <laughs> son. Oh, he actually called him his son. Come on, man. Oh, yeah, I forgot about uh, that. He's like, oh, I know that. I call him my son, and you make fun of me for it. Like, yeah, please stop doing that. If you know, then just take care of the situation. Stop doing it. I don't get it. Like, it's cool to think, like, fa pets are family members 100%. But, like, when if you treat him like your son, maybe you want to do blood work. Maybe you want to not talk to him yeah. like he's an actual baby. Oh, yeah, but you're such a nut. <laughs> I hate, that's my... Okay, we got to get it to top 10 cringe shit that Phil does this year because that nut thing is the opposite of nut. That's the that's the cringe nut. Oh, you're such a nut. That's my least favorite, man. I, that's my new thing is that's the worst. I think that's the worst single action that DSP does. Um, but anyways, um, keep uh, going. I, <laughs> just to add a little bit, um, I agree with you. I would extend this to every time he uses the baby voice. Yes. For anything. Mm -hmm. When he's like baby talking like this. Oh Jasper. Come here Jasper. Oh little buddy. Look at him. He's so cute. It's just. Oh my god. So <laughs> greasy. But yeah. That's that's about it for me for the Thanksgiving thing. It's a shit pre-stream. It's absolutely no effort. He said that he doesn't expect people to watch his stream because it's Thanksgiving. But then as he was getting into Modern Warfare. He talked about it being Thanksgiving, so more people would be at home, therefore playing the game. And he would have more people to play against. So there we go. Another contradiction. And um, yeah, basically that's it.
So yeah, so real quick, I got the, the tweet up. Um, so once again, DSP News, which is, again, DSP News is the content on that podcast, as by his own words. That took up nine minutes. So 10% of content and 23% Q&A. Uh, Phil's, you didn't get a Phil's Day Off segment. You got five minutes of Phil's Day Off. God, come on. So put that together. You got 14 minutes of content, and everything else was intro, schedule, begging, or Q&A. Sound good? You like it. You enjoy yeah. this. You love this. Don't ask questions. Hey, there, was some, there, there was somebody who looked up. Oh, now I'm talking about the Black Friday thing, but it doesn't matter. It's basically yeah, the yeah, same thing ahead. anyways. Somebody who looked up how much money he spent on the fucking sandwich that he ate. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. All like, oh, my God. Amazing. It was like 70-something dollars in total, right? <laughs> 73 yeah. dollars. Approximately. Yeah. 50 to 70 is what they were saying. My sandwich video tomorrow. Yeah, I'm talking about that. But yeah, 50 <laughs> to 70 is what they said on, on the stream. So, yeah. So, <laughs> like, here, this is uh, from Mr. Stuff. Uh, Mr. Hus Stuff, by the way, put this on Twitter. And one problem with this is that Dasher tip. He's not leaving that $14 tip. Get the fuck out of here with that. That's a five. Easy. Uh, but yeah, so total for those two sandwiches that he said he got was seventy three dollars. Uh, but yeah, it, it take away the tip, it's probably sixty dollars. And the place is very close to his house, very close to his house. Uh, but nope, got to get DoorDash. Cat can't pick it up. That's not in her contract. What are you thinking? What do you? What's wrong with you? You think she's going to pick it up? Get the fuck out of here. But also, why couldn't he just have Thanksgiving leftovers on the day after Thanksgiving? as you know the feasting thing that would make it thematic and fitting with you know being thanksgiving and everything but i mean why why would he do that it's not like he actually cares about this or something it's not like it's his business or something no 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 Come and on. notice how on thanksgiving the holiday that everybody associates with being with your family and it's one of the special holidays of the year everybody gathering having a nice time he did absolutely nothing special oh yeah but... you know what he did he gave a he gave a list of of shit that cat watched that he just watched too. Oh yeah, I watched oh, me yeah? and cat watched this guy play this. We watched this guy play this. Cat's just watching hot dudes play games, not watching Phil Burnell. That would be a mistake. She knows better than that. I'm watching other dudes, and sometimes Phil just says, "Oh, yeah, I watched you, honey." What a great Thanksgiving. What a family. This is a great uh, family, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. I was talking more about the stream stuff. Ah, okay, okay, stream stuff, yeah, yeah. My other point was, on Black Friday, the time that everybody associates with being a consumer, uh, everybody associates with marketing, mm -hmm. everybody associates with, you know, exploiting people so they can buy your stuff, he did an eight-hour fucking stream. <laughs> that, that should tell you where his priorities are. Mm -hmm. When Thanksgiving gets Gugats, and this gets a megathon. <laughs> we also got some... Um... Uh, some teeth lore. You ready for this? The quote. Oh, here. no. Uh, my oh, teeth, Jesus. as I got older, a lot of the enamel wore off. I'm reading this from Phil Collins' Twitter, King of Gout One. Uh, so when I have really sugary things, it hurts my teeth. So some of his enamel wore off, guys. That's why when, when he looks like he's a pained bite, that's, he's not Dude. lying. He has, he's, a lot of his enamel wore off. But I remember him talking about, um, how was that called? Uh, mouthwash uh, mouth that wash. had enamel restoring properties. <laughs> and he was taking that to restore his enamel. That, that's, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can find that as a segment. That's a really funny moment. <laughs> that was from the fucking commercial uh, about Thin Mints or something, by the way. That was ad oh my God. about all his takes. But there wasn't even that crazy take, so we have nothing like memorable from it, but... Anyways, so. Yeah, uh, somebody got a, a tally on how many videos Derek submitted compared to the the entirety of mm -hmm. all the videos. W was it like eighty something percent? Oh, oh yeah, it was it was incredible amount. Uh, I can't remember that exactly. It was a vast thing. majority for sure. Oh yeah, Derek is loving this. Derek loves those things. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but anyways. Anything Real else quick, before yeah. we get off of the before we yeah. get off of the sandwich, yes. I did just want to point out that there's two points in the sandwich that are far more important than him just eating a sandwich and how much he spent on it. And for some reason, it's the box that it came in, and he had the brilliant idea to make a sandwich upside down as if that were going to solve something. He 
he his whoa, 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 whoa. He's, <laughs> wait wait hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on yeah yeah Can yeah you explain that wait start again i i got it but i just want to make sure we get it okay some other people are kind of slower than me say it one more time what what are you okay so he the box comes in the way that firehouse does their box is it comes in like a little cardboard container instead of getting it wrapped up like yeah. a normal sandwich place would do it comes in a cardboard container uh -huh. he made sure to show this off and talk about how it shows that they care about their customers and it's much better than wrapping up the sandwich right uh -huh. oh very strange <laughs> thing to do it's probably anyway yeah so then later he's complaining because the the way a sandwich is typically cut the bottom part of the bread on the sub sandwich is is thinner than the top and all of the juice and all of the condiments run to the bottom so you should just make the sandwich upside down so that when that happens the bread doesn't get as mushy and he thought this was some galaxy brained idea <laughs> And I really don't understand why you wouldn't just cut the bread a little higher if that's your big problem. I don't think that flipping the sandwich over was going to be. That's not the solution. I don't. <laughs> I gotta Those are the two standouts thing. for me. Okay. I'll see if I can get it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find it. Oh, if you make a video about it, let's tease it. Yeah, give us a clip. We'll show that. That sounds very special. <laughs> oh, man. this I don't even know what to say about this. <laughs> I just remember um, a bunch of people usually when he does a feasting, they upload some gifts of him eating food, but it's like reversed. So it like comes oh, out of his mouth then yeah. goes back in. That's the undoubtedly the best part of every feasting is that one gif. <laughs> yeah. The one gif we get. And, and now uh, with this sandwich, we got him like um, bending over a little bit to eat it. So he's showing off his hair. And man, it's a it's a tragic situation over there. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even want to mm -hmm. start with that. All right, as uh, it, if you're still looking at this, I'll read a few shout outs here as you're looking. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Kaiser I think I got says, it. I just Piggy would tell him to ask the police for a safe house so that the trolls don't have it, don't send a hit squad against them. Kaiser's <laughs> talking about doing the interview with uh, with Mudahar. What would it take? Or any one of those other he's, guys. He's too paranoid to even do it over like Zoom or Discord because somebody somehow can, can snatch his IP. Oh, so yeah, he yeah. Was... Mm -hmm. Too scared to do that, even with uh, with Craig. Mm -hmm. You can't do that, bro. You don't know what's going to happen. I got to figure out all... Remember his excuse for not sending the uh, fucking... The uh, WV Champions account right away was like, I just got to see the risk involved with that. It's a screenshot. What are the risks involved with the screenshot? And, and also, even if there was risk considering let's let's say that there was yeah okay, he didn't was. think about it before he went on the podcast to defend himself he had to be asked explicitly on the spot to start considering the risk because mm -hmm. like you go into a place you know they're gonna kind of confront you with this controversy and you prepare nothing to defend yourself like come that, on that's get the out stupidest of here thing. looks yeah, like that, a fraudster that's the stupidest thing he did was that like how can you not prepare for that question you know you're really gonna say like that wasn't my account or i can't show you that you have to be ready for that you have to be ready for that it could have been so done even though we all know it's him he could have been cleared with the normies very easily if he just showed it right away and it wasn't him it'd be so easy to do that but nope but speaking of the normies uh, I, I understand Me. you made a valid point, but that podcast, that the interview is fa five hours long. How many normies are going to sit through, let's say, two to three hours to get to the champion stuff to begin with? Well, because like they can watch the first hour and yeah. he already looks like an asshole looks guilty. <laughs> well, that's true. But I think the Clippers would have clipped that moment and you normies might have seen that on other periphery channels. Right. You know, like the remember how Phil calls it the the toilet bowl of, of whatever he oh, talked yeah. about. That <laughs> yeah. would have happened, and that would have been, like, more people, like, maybe Turkey Tom would have been like, well, Phil proved it wasn't his account on that on that interview. Like he, you know, someone might have said that, but instead we get, Tur what yeah. does Turkey Tom say? It's totally him. I believe it's him. He got the game wrong, yeah. but, you know, that might have happened. Um, Hate Army in the house says, his vision, his vision is like the retro Doom games where enemies are 2D sprites that are rotated to always face you <laughs> and get larger as they approach you. <laughs> Someone's got to make the mod now. What? You got like DoorDash driver, enemy, 
We got the, you know, the uh, cart thief enemy in the supermarket. Yeah, the the game's in a supermarket. That works well with Doom style. And then you got the, the oh, yeah. cart, cart thieves you got to watch out for. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's anyways. Logan in the house says, uh, the, this 100% explains his car accident and lack of spatial awareness. He does not see in 3D. <laughs> I mean. There we go. Hey, uh, I, I got convinced. an idea for a game. Yes. It's like Subway Surfers, but you're in the supermarket. The guy chasing you is the the cart thief, obviously, and you gotta navigate yourself between the aisles to collect the whale tail gin. And sometimes you can get a power up. You can get like a a, a Hogan that makes you like super fast. You yeah. can get like a big jump with um maybe you got a gout crystal power up that makes you jump a lot. Oh yeah, uh, that's gonna be a pretty hype game. Oh, I'm down. Cherry juice is like the the time limit is how much cherry juice you have left. You know, as you go, the cherry juice starts going down. That's the time yeah. limit feature we have. <laughs> oh yeah, there's so many power ups we could do. Oh man, it'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, I love this idea, Meerkat. Guys, get to working on that. I'm trying to see that come uh, end of the year, please. Mm -hmm, please, we need that for Christmas. <laughs> uh, Psychops86 <laughs> says he also decided to not wear the vest goal after hitting the vest. Yeah, what was the excuse for that? It was too hot, I guess, or. Uh, he was wearing one of those flannels, and yeah, obviously flannels. that is like glued onto his body, so you can't unwear it. <laughs> glued on. <laughs> it's very meaningful. Yeah. Dude. It's very meaningful. And it was that was on Thanksgiving. People were thankful for his content and for his existence enough to get him to one hundred fifty dollars. I think it was even within the podcast itself. And then he was like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna get too hot. I can't wear a vest. Fuck you." <laughs> Uh, okay, Atlas has provided me with the with the with the clip of the uh, sub the sub sandwich oh, yeah. hype is coming in hype here. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna play it. Oh, let's count. Okay, you know what? I'll do it this way. Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Hop out. Show that. All right. Well, give me a second. Give me a second. Let me real more. Let me real go more. Uh, shout out here before, as I get it. Uh, uh, D Dog says he needs the trig key cooling gel for his teeth. <laughs> oh, yeah, That's deep cut there. All right, it's almost ready. Deep cut, deep cut. Yeah, here we go. All right. Oh, shit. Well, sadly, you guys can't hear that though. God damn it. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, he can use that, that cooling gel. He probably uses uh, toothpaste like that, too. Just You just apply it on your teeth like mm -hmm. it's it's uh, thermal paste, and you just close your mouth and go about your business. You know, that that's how it works. He's the kind of dude that does <laughs> mouthwash and says, yep, I'm brushed. You know what I'm saying? Like that yeah. feels like what he's doing, you know? <laughs> I hope uh, not. He's it, always gone about going on about how he has to brush his teeth after he eats and, and before the streams or whatever. So if that's all he's doing, there's no excuse for how long it's taken him. I yeah. mean, yeah, but <laughs> you know how he is. You know, he gets that. He get, tips back about a, a cap full of, of mouthwash. All right, going to bed. You know, if that you got to get the gin out somehow, you know what I'm saying? Somehow. Anyways, all right. I am working feverishly to get it over here. You know when Sam's not here, I have to pick it up, all right? It's very tough. Feel bad for me. <laughs> Vike says, ALT and technology go together like lamb and tuna fish. That is not true, okay? That is not true. That's the, not even a nugget of truth. I have extremely professional style. I'm, I can install servers. I'm a Bispy's business team. Shut the yep. fuck up. Okay. You passed that test mm -hmm. without a lawyer, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I passed the test, uh, all right? But also, okay. you, you do stuff on WPIG as well, which is complex enough by itself, and then mm -hmm. you have to switch within 10 minutes yes. to this layout and this format and everything. So it is, it is very difficult. Do you understand how difficult that is? All right, finally it's here. It's not the bitching. All right, I'm tired of the bitching. Here we go. When it comes to sandwich bread, traditionally the top of sandwich bread is thicker, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And tougher than the bottom. The bottom usually ends up a little bit thinner, I would say, right? Why? When you stack things on sandwich bread, all the weight goes to the bottom, and the condiments go down because of gravity and soak the bottom. So if you know that the top of bread is tougher, when you make sandwich bread, why not bake it, cut it, flip it, and make the sandwich upside down? Mm, okay, <laughs> that's the big brain take, is why don't you cut I just... it, flip it? Mm-hmm. 
there's just there's little segments like that when he does them i'm just so baffled and confused i don't know why we wasted our time with this i don't know why he thought this was a thing he needed to say <laughs> dude when you're hurting for content you'll say whatever the fuck it takes man remember he wanted to have a restaurant he literally said that i was thinking about having a restaurant if, he, if youtube didn't work out or as his diversifying effects was to have a restaurant it was one of his kind of I don't want to call it like reach goals, but yeah, he definitely thought about that in his life was having a restaurant. Well, that doesn't surprise me simply because I've watched enough kitchen nightmares and I know that most of the, the bosses and owners of restaurants in that show act exactly like him because their problem is we don't have enough customers where, well, why don't you have enough customers? Well, I don't know. My food is great. The staff is great. Everything's fantastic. Then Gordon Ramsay tells him the food is trash. He tries to change something. And the excuse is that, of course, uh, their customer base that already exists, it's used to that food and they like it. So it's a, <laughs> it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of failure with him and with all those people in, in Kitchen Nightmares. It's yeah, uh, basically true. the same thing. A lot of people want to say, I'm, we're unique. You know, like, well, we're unique. We serve 18 million styles of pizza, so that's cool, right? But then, like, you know, Gordon Ramsay, whoever the fuck comes in, is like, you should have, like, four things and do four things the best. But that's the yep. same thing like Phil does. I'm, I'm unique. I can't do it that way. Hey, you should do direct capture, dude. Oh, I can't do that. What, are you crazy? I can't do that. That's too much work. You know, same exact thing. Uh, big ups to Cyclops again. Says, Derek vids are all kid-related. Very cringe, Phil. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, we talked about that before. But, yeah, Derek's getting into dark space here. And uh, I don't know where it's going to end up. Uh, but Down 4 Punch says, I eat my sub-style sub sandwich upside down after I get a hit of oxygen from an inhaler. Oh. Oh, yeah. Nice. That'll keep you keep you loaded with air for multiple minutes. Yeah. Don't forget that. You, multiple you, minutes. You want to wash it down with a nice hit from the, from the inhaler. <laughs> All right, so we do have um, obviously Lockout Live's coming up in a second. We're gonna keep keep uh, see what that's gonna be for today. Uh, we didn't talk about the Street Fighter that much. Not much to talk about Street Fighter, but I did find it fun that Phil got fourteen and one. I believe was it fourteen and one this time? Did you see that Atlas? I or did. That's that's the number I recall. Fourteen and one. I didn't watch it, but I did hear about it. Fourteen and one by Cami which is the best, right? Because Cammy's hot and it can't be Cammy. Uh, but anyways, on the pro level, like tier list thing, the people said it, people showed like the results in terms of like what Cammy versus Dalsim normally get. And it's like 55% of the time Cammy wins, right? And 45% of the time Dalsim wins. And like these like trackers of who wins top level matches between those two. So all this shit Phil spouts about how like it's impossible matchup, can't do anything. It's just complete bullshit that he just keeps spouting because I'm learning here. I'm learning. And he plays like good players, like free one up or whatever. I'm learning here. You can't play me now. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn here. Like, I don't know. But <laughs> wasn't, wasn't all of this not even ranked? It was just yeah, in casual, just in wasn't casual, it? Casual. Casual. Uh. All casual. And he won't go there. Oh, he can't do in ranking because he has to learn it the whole way first because he doesn't want to get embarrassed there. But if you lose 14-1 and one when you're in casual, I mean, you're getting embarrassed in casual, so why not make the jump? I don't know if it was the, the, the following day or if this was... Because he played Street Fighter a couple of times this past week. Mm. Uh, but he went for, he got 14-1, and one, and then he goes on to say, but I was doing pretty good against other people, sorts of diamond players, and like I was really holding my own. But Cammy, she's got this move that just shuts out everything Dalsim does, and I was learning. And like I always say, you got to take your licks to make sure that you 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 really learn. Like it's just it's just cope through and through every time. Yeah. Take your licks. That's the best. I, I'm thinking licks. if he. If he completely stopped any kind of cope in like self therapy that he's doing, yep. Considering that the Thanksgiving stream that that shit was all of it was a cope, mm -hmm. I think he's like less than a week away from an actual mental breakdown because he's trying so hard to make sense of why he's so trash without actually acknowledging that he's trash and justifying it. That man, if he stopped doing this shit, he would be in big trouble with himself within like a week. And, and it would by, be, yeah. And, and by the way, also he was saying how I, I th when he talked about that one free up, one one free up. Well, I forget the guy's name. One, whatever that guy, the good player that he played before in the past. By the way, 
Uh, he said that, um, I threw a challenge out to anybody. If they want to challenge me, just let me know. But pff, no one took it. You know, he kind of like threw that out there. Like people should want to be ap approaching him. Real straight fighting game players should want to be approaching him, you know, and, and do match with him. Because he so much wants to get back in the FGC, man. He wants to be thought of as positive. Even though the ship is so long sail that even fucking LTG won't do a match with you. You know, yeah. but he's saying like, please, guys, <laughs> please, anyone, if you want to challenge me, I'm ready for it. Why do you want to, who wants to go with you and you just bitch about it afterwards and, and, you know, let's, you run away. Remember with fucking that guy, uh, you know, Snake Eyes or whatever, ran away, Snake yep. Eyes, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> literally ran away. What? You know, it's like he wants to be seen as a FTC player, but then when he plays a real good player, he says, I, I'm not, I can't play them. I'm learning. Okay. I'm learning. Whatever. Yeah. Shadow ban from SGC is the best way to say it because they all know they always they already hated him then. Don't get it. Don't get. Don't forget about. Don't believe his shit about you know evil AJ. Uh, you know, start all the hatred. They hated him long ago, uh, and they just continued yeah. to do so until today. You know. Well, yeah. Why would you want to bring that back into the FGC, the community that you you like? Why would you want to bring DSP back in? And DSP's proven that any time that anybody deals with him. It just turns out negative for them. So why would you touch him with a 10-foot pole? Just stay away. Completely ignore him. You're not going to get anything positive out of it anyway. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what's the best can happen? You beat Phil soundly and that's it? Imagine if Phil wins a game off you, you know? Then you look, you look like the asshole. Who's going to do that? Yeah, you know? pretty much. <laughs> Remember, and I, well, fuck, what was I going to say? He wants to... Um, or that this is shows you how Phil's like you know Athena in the FCC is when he plays someone that he knows he have to like he says hi to like their character. Remember when he played Bucktooth? Hey Bucktooth, hope you're doing well, man. That's the level we're at with his relationship <laughs> with anyone in the FCC. He has to talk to their character, like Bucktooth being blank or whatever, and he's saying like, "How you doing, Bucktooth? Hope you're doing well." That's sad, man. That is sad. Yeah. <laughs> and considering that you, you might remember earlier on during the summer, he was lurking in people's chats. Not really lurking, but he was commenting stuff mm -hmm. in like pro players. I think it was Justin Wong or something. Yeah, yeah Justin Wong. So, yeah, um, he was literally in Justin Wong's chat. Yeah. 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 We played, and he was yeah. talking about it immediately just made it about himself and how long it took him to get to master like this dude has no idea of just how to hold on a casual conversation with somebody even in stream chat he's just so obsessed with himself he just loves talking about himself that's why loki i i wanted to see dsp asks it you know his interview series yeah. actually happen mm -hmm. and see him just sit there and nod his head and wait until the other guy stops talking so he can start talking about himself mm -hmm. i just wanted to see that and that's exactly how it would go. But DSP wants to talk about himself so bad in other people's chat that he uses his own emotes so that people know <laughs> that it's him. That's the warning sign. I'm here, guys. <laughs> I'm here. God. All right, real quick. Let's uh, oh, make sure I didn't. I hit up. Back. Oh, I don't know. Check. I, I hit that one up. All right. Anyways. Uh, so, anything else? I got one last thing. Please, Meerkat. Go. Um, hit it. Hit it. Kevin. Kevin just uploaded a random DSP interview from 2015. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys know how to find it. It's on the Almighty Tevin channel with some guy called DJ Bunch. So if you want to go and see this piece of lore, you can check it out. It's DJ from Bunch 2015. I had no idea it actually happened. So you can yeah. go on the Almighty Tevin channel and actually watch the thing. Sound good? Sounds and good that's the last I have from this week's uh any kind of notes or anything that i saw yeah so one thing that worth noting is definitely the, the the pattern of of slow night streams now it's not like a thing that's once in a while he, he just night streams now are down uh, across the board and that's why last week like how many weeks in a row now has it been where there's you know legitimate worry in his daily investment meetings you know like he has to talk he has to give everyone the talking to it feels like we've been here for a while you know like stuck in this loop of Big day when he gets back from streams. Midweek we're slow, and then at the end of the week we pick it up again. But it's always now. It's really feels like we're in the on the hamster wheel of like the same patterns in a row. You know, of like low support, yeah. low support. It just feels like we're there now. I know it's miles away from anything being worried about money, but uh, it definitely feels like that's kind of that's the, the case right now more than before. Yeah, I, I think it's going to keep escalating because it was probably two years from now, uh, two years ago, 
I was wondering when is going to be the time where he he officially doesn't have money to even buy games. And that mm -hmm. happened like a, a year later. Yeah. And I was thinking it's going to take him like actual three, four years to get to that point. Uh -huh. But it's been a very steep decline in him being delusional about all of it and trying to look for reasons why it's actually somehow a success is hurting him way more than any kind of trolling or us talking about him or uh, the lol cow podcast talking about it ever could and he's uh he's in for a good time <laughs> this pattern continues so real quick i just looked at it let's go for november right just to check my work of course i'm on piece of pieces tracker here uh he got oh he got a hundred dollars one stream at night one stream one uh and yellow yellow or oh, sorry two he got two streams like that too uh so Yellow streams, let's see, he has, okay, yellow streams, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five streams above 50 of the whole month, five. And under 50 it was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So yeah, 75% does not even get $50 anymore in night stream. That just doesn't happen. That just goes, that, it's just the state of the matter. 15 days yeah. out of the month, he has not got $50. And if you scroll down that tracker, that is not the way it used to go. Red used to be a rarity. And now red is the norm, all right? It just, that's what the night streams go. So uh, anyways, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm thinking, I just don't know. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I just don't know how he can consider himself a successful businessman or say that he operates a successful business if he can't buy the things that he needs to continue to operate his business. If you were actually running that sandwich shop, if you can't afford the, the meats and the, and the vegetables, what the hell are you going to put out? That's not a successful business. And I know it's because he spends all of his money on WWE champions, but mm -hmm. how does he not see the problem with not being able to buy the thing that he needs for his business? Like, what isn't clicking in there? Well, here's the, he's got a know, tough man. job, right? He has to appear to need your money, but also appear to not need your money at the same time. Very difficult job, let me tell you. Very difficult yeah. <laughs> to appear destitute, but also flex while appearing destitute when in reality you're not destitute at all because he could buy all the games he wants with his youtube payment alone but you have to appear to be very poor atlas you know this we have to be at yeah. the edge of financial ruin always uh so that's how it rolls that's how we do this yeah all right he would hate it if uh he heard you use the word poor he is not poor ah, yes remember absolutely. He is not poor. He is just in a difficult spot right now. Uh -huh. And that difficult spot has been going on since like 2014. But don't think about it. Do not think um, about yeah, it. What, what, just donate. What I wanted to say about this is if you got two shows and one of them is doing much worse than the other one, you want to spice up the, the bad show and do some gimmicks that are exclusive to that. Mm -hmm. And he had something going on when um, when he did the Dunce Lures because that was almost an exclusive night stream thing and it yeah. kind of was working so i'm thinking he's gonna start pulling some gimmicks real soon Ooh. something something along those lines it's not gonna be creative but it's gonna be a, an attempt at something and uh, i can't <laughs> wait to see what that's gonna be yeah i hope he definitely does something he needs it he's gonna be spinning in the chair what else could we do uh holding up jasper we could uh, off camera push-ups push -ups. we could bring those back push -ups. oh yeah <laughs> there we go same wavelength yeah we could uh you know sing a Christmas song, put on the Santa hat. So many options here, but that's why he's the best, but best ever. You know what? I'm thinking shots. It's shot time, baby. Ooh. It's been it's been a long time since he conquered his addiction, his problem, his uh, substance abuse issues mm -hmm. with alcohol, and alcohol is making a comeback, you guys, because he was really <laughs> excited to be drinking it during the, the special stream. So why not have a little bit of a drink at night, get buzzed, you know, have a fun, chill time with with the community. I mean, it's not crazy. Back it it's, way. it's a fun time. Uh -huh. He's going to follow the only use me yeah. blade route. Let lit, let, let lit Romney out. Just polish off a bottle per stream. That sounds uh -huh. like a good time. DSP, pick that up. I like that. Te like if he turned on text to speech for what? $10. You know, there's assholes, trolls that would do it. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't resist. Yeah, but. It, it has to be a super chat because those it's it's harder to refund because otherwise it's it's gonna be it's gonna be chargeback city every stream, just 
endless. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't think he's ever going to have TTS because he, he has an obsession of having complete control over his stream because that's the only sense of control he has in his whole life. Correct. So I don't think he's ever going to do something that's going to make people derail it, even if it costs them money. Correct. Not wrong. <laughs> Can you imagine? Manual notifications on his stream alone are some of the worst parts of his content. If he just <laughs> managed to find a way to automate it where he, like, even if he didn't have complete control, if he could just come to terms with that, his streams would be so much better. He just refuses. Yeah. The most important part. That's one of the main parts of the podcast, dude. We can't get rid of that. Once you get yeah, rid of that, what's it, left? <laughs> usually there's some kind of a obscen obscenity filter for these pop-ups. So if somebody has an offensive name, they're not going to show up. But with DSP, there's so many normal words that to him are offensive, like horse, Subaru, Tevin, that you, it just, how do you have people with random names like that keep popping up and not bothering him? He's going to bother him too much. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. We need to see the ban list. How many words on that fucking ban list? That, that's a treasure trove. Like we we, gotta, we had that from back on Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta. Yeah. Like, I want to see like a competition, like who can, who can write the most full words in DSP's chat without having it go through. <laughs> like you know, like you, like once a day we have like flights of people going in, and you see how many words you can type before you hit it. How many words can you type that don't show up in a row? You know, like a streak. Yeah. <laughs> You know? I know, I I know for a fact some detractor names are are banned because he's admitted to it. Uh, I know that um, I think Subaru yes. is a banned word. It, or it used to be, uh, which is it's kind of completely inoffensive. It's just like Subaru. I I know what it, the context you know, is, but yeah. still, like, how are you gonna get bothered by that? Well, the only reason we know is Phil told us. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and um. Uh, weirdly enough, I don't think exorcism is banned. And oh, weirdly God. enough, when Kat was doing the Q&A with him, uh -huh. there was uh, a question. Somebody asked her, hey, Kat, do you like uh, the exorcism film or exorcism movies? And it completely went over his head. It was so fucking funny. I cannot believe. He didn't know about it? That, I mean, he doesn't know anything about her, so that doesn't surprise me. But, I mean, that's what, what was her reaction to that? I, I got to see that. I don't remember that. <laughs> About as usual as the, the normal cat reaction on one of those streams. Because uh, it was kind of like when exactly. whenever she looks at chat and makes a weird cringe face, that, that was the reaction, basically. Oh, so she looks yeah. uncomfortable the whole time, regardless of what anybody is saying. She doesn't want to be there. Yes. Oh, yeah. She knows from the beginning. She she looks over that fucking chat and sees a bad, you know, someone saying something about it. And then it's it's over. The whole time it's over. Could have been avoided if he, she didn't have to read chat, but you know, still can't do that. Mr. Extravagant in the house says, ALT is the Lou Gehrig of this show, always here. Yes, I have been compared to Lou Gehrig before. Thank you for that. Legendary <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Atlas, what is coming yes. down your neck of the woods? What can we get people excited about on the Atlas the Bookkeeper channel? Okay, come on. Uh, well, I do the videos every day at noon Eastern. Um, the sandwich video tomorrow, probably not the most exciting content ever, but I add my own little thing on it. Hopefully, I'll enjoy it regardless. Uh, just auditory warning for the audio style listeners. There is some visuals, and it's going to sound terrible with him smacking the whole time. But mm, if you can make God. it through it, I it'll be a video. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Nice. Meerkat, what about you? What you got cooking? Come on. Mm, I don't know. I got nothing cooking. I was planning on doing the Black Friday thing, but I wasn't. I wasn't well, so I didn't do it. And uh, apparently, I didn't miss anything, so I didn't have to stay until six a.m. to actually watch the whole fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I dodged a bullet, That's and instead, I watched fucking Survivor series. That <laughs> epic WWE until they, six a.m. Were they hanging? Oh, yeah. Hanging or what? How was the banging? How was the hanging? Um. Well, we had some really hype moments, especially <laughs> right at the end. Um, I guess, spoiler alert, Punk is back, CM Punk. Oh. The, uh, an actually Woo! successful Phil, <laughs> even though he kind of acts like our Phil too. But, mm -hmm. you know, at least he, he got something to show for it. And yeah, it was fun. Sounds good to me, dude. All right, guys, that will do for this show. What do you, uh, oh, what do you have going on, and how far are you in with the uh, iceberg? Because that's ah. the, the thing that I'm very interested in. So, iceberg, iceberg, iceberg. Let's see. We got, um, 
we just fit well the job is gonna jobs are gonna finish this week so we've done one episode for each of the jobs and uh that's gonna finish this week with sikorsky on thursday get ready for a marathon there all the sikorsky mentions that we have time to show we will show uh but yeah we just covered the second latina as as a spot down the iceberg second latina is a pretty deep cut there uh uh, which is not the one, not the hot Latina that like Phil, the second Latina that hit on him while he worked at the yogurt shop, but Phil spurned her advances. That's a pretty deep cut. Uh, the second <laughs> Latina. Very rare. <laughs> it's very rare to hear about the second Latina. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing stuff. Also, on... Yeah, go ahead, um, please. He is uh, half lactose intolerant, so that relationship wouldn't work out, obviously. You Never would have can't be dating a and, dairy girl. And he's such a good employee that uh, the boss said, it doesn't seem like you'd be doing anything with her because she's like not hot enough for Phil, I guess. That's what Phil said, the manager said. So you can uh, believe what you want from that story. Uh, yeah, we just heard the direct, direct capture. We did direct, direct capture last Tuesday, and that was fun about. I hate direct capture. It's too much work. All of a sudden he does it. Now it's the best thing ever because it's so much work, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, we'll get to our normal stuff this week on WPIG Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, we'll be back Thursday with another That Being Said show, of course. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. You're all legends. And uh, yeah, well, uh, I think who's streaming now? I don't know who's doing the first the internet because we lost. Decepticron's taking a break with that, sadly. But uh, I'll redirect you somewhere. You're all legends. Atlas, thanks so much for joining us today, brother. It was fun. We'll get you on yeah, here again for sure, dude. Thanks for having me. I loved it. All right, guys. You're all legends. Bye. This one goes out to the one and only, the big cat, the fat cat. Big ups. I first saw you in Burger King. You took two seats, cause that ass is way too big. Had a boyfriend, I realized. But you told him lies with your raccoon eyes. The DoorDash is here Wipe away your tears Got you extra fries And they taste just right Have no fear There's no trolls here Tevin made you cry With those raccoon eyes Raccoon so much she loves me and a family and jasper and, and you know the things we get to do together even though i definitely want more time with them and more family time but i absolutely love my life today compared to how it used to be seriously
all those years back then, you'd be like, it's a whirlwind of crap. It was me. And by the way, I've told you guys about my past. I used to drink way too much. I would be drinking constantly, all the time, because I was so stressed out. I was I, honestly, when I started with this whole thing, I was depressed many years ago, you know, a decade ago. I didn't like my life or anything. And basically, liquor was the way to kind of get through that. You know, it was, oh, I hate my life. I hate, I hate who I am. So let me just drink it all the way and just keep pumping out fucking YouTube videos. I don't have to do that shit anymore. You know, like I'm happy with who I am. Thank you all very much for the engagement today. I appreciate it. That wasn't a very good one. It kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie.